hello folks uh, next talk will be by you know freddy he's uh, in the devrel team at microsoft and he'll be talking about accessibility for all and programming for accessibility so we'll start with our Thank you so much, and it's always great to be here at uh, Parkon. This is the third Parkon that I've spoken on, and and it feels like family. It's such a close knit community, and even more, um, you know, uh, the great reason for us to do this talk here because. Uh, if, if we're a family, then we, we want to actually bring everyone into the talk. And the talk I'm doing today is very dear to my heart. It's on accessibility. I have achondroplasia. Um, I have dwarfism. I'm four foot one. Um, and I've been speaking on uh, accessibility in programming for the last four to five years. In this talk, you can follow it. I've got all the slides, uh, the demos, all of that. You can go to aka.ms. Uh, forward slash uh, four dash all. You can use the QR code. It is going to be available at the end when we do Q and A. You can also follow me um, on at uh, Rory Pretty. And uh, just a brief introduction. I'm a developer advocate for Microsoft. I'm actually a Java developer, but I also do uh, accessibility um, advocacy. And you'll see today that I'm doing all of my demos in Python. Yeah, I know. Um, so um, let's get started. And uh, being um, having dwarfism, I've always had to bolt on my um, my world. And these are my car pedals on my midlife crisis, my 335 uh, BMW. And that's really the story that I want to uh, tell you today is that accessibility has also been handled as a bolt on, being able to kind of look at it um, after the fact. And 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 I make a plan. He has me uh, lecturing at a at a university and and trying to uh, reach the screen. And he has me trying to get some coffee. Um, you can see that. Oh, I really like coffee. Not as much as whiskey, but I like coffee. And um, we we've also seen this happen a little bit in in the software industry. And uh, people have been tired of doing bolt on. So the first kind of real uh, change that I've noticed. Uh, um, when it when it came to accessibility was the the, the inclusion of ad, agile into software development because agile also uh, promised to change a lot. Um, you can see here he has the manifesto for agile software development and it says we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others to do it. Through this work, we have come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over uh, comprehensive vocabulary collab. A documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, responding to change over following a plan. That is, while there is value on the items on the right, we value on the items on the left a little bit more. And the Agile Manifesto really came, came about because people wanted change. But the problem was that what we saw is that the change didn't happen exactly like we wanted. Here's a, an Agile open office where someone put a, a fish tank in it. And can you imagine having to clean that? In an um, in an office environment, with the fish, like you know, suddenly, like you know, decided to be more agile and jump out. We've also noticed with with agile with software that we we have whiteboards everywhere, and these these magnificent whiteboards that now you have to learn how to clean, use the right cleaning material. And we also learned how to post sticky notes. I've been on two courses, two courses on how to post sticky notes, and you hold the note in your hand, you take your finger, and you slowly kind of. Uh, push the notes off and, and take it off to not disturb the glue. But what, what, what is going on? Why did I have to learn about um, sticky notes when all I really wanted to do is create agile and, and accessibility? But the, the truth is that we all suffer from this the same hydra, the same kind of bugs that came about. And if you don't know the hydra, it's, it's Greek mythology, whereas if you chop the, the one head off uh, of the, the monster, another head kind of grows up. And this is the same with accessibility, that as soon as you chop one bug off an accessible bug and you program towards it, another one actually comes about. And the, and the promise of Agile may have not uh, really uh, happened. And this is the, what my, the crux of the talk is. Instead of bolting on the, uh, the software to make it do, how do you start and actually get your software being accessible from the, the start? Once you have accessible uh, software and once you have your agile process, then you can also look at how do you start with aligned autonomy. If you don't know aligned autonomy, it takes alignment and autonomy and it gives people three different purposes, autonomy, mastery and purpose. Now with autonomy, mastery and purpose, it gives people the need to actually create accessible software. It's also part of Ikigai. Ikigai is the pursuit of what you love, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, and what you're good at. 
Now, accessibility, you might be asking, what has this got to do with accessibility, Rory? Because if you look at um, uh, accessibility and you say, hey, who wants to make accessibility uh, software? Uh, put your hands up. The only people who put their hands up are preachers, bank robbers, roller coasters, cops, and uh, DJs. Because unfortunately, Agile is not the only uh, problem that we, we have to do that. We also live in an empathy bubble. Now, you've never been a dwarf like me. You've, you've never had dwarfism. So you can't really uh, understand what it's like to, to have to uh, create software for me because you're just not uh, living in my shoes. And that's called an empathy bubble. So how do you get around that? And we, we're going to take a look at um, Agile. We're going to look at how to uh, incorporate Agile and also how to use Agile methodologies to cater for um, uh, and remove the empathy bubble. Because if you don't remove that empathy bubble, when you try to chop the hardware's head off, you're going to fail and you're going to create a, uh, inaccessible software that uh, we don't uh, want uh, people to actually use. You can see here, he has an, an example on accessibility fail where they try to create a wheelchair ramp and obviously they, they didn't actually manage. So I've got a plan, I've got a plan for you today. We're going to define accessibility. We're going to understand your organization's unique accessibility mo uh, motivators. Then we're going to set achievable interim milestones. And finally, we're going to implement uh, tools. And once we implement the tools, we're going to measure and improve and automate with those tools. I'm going to show you some DevOps tool chains. I'm going to show you the immersive reader, some very nice demos that we're going to go through. So let's define accessibility. Accessibility is the design product services environment so that everyone, including people with disabilities, can follow uh, experience. And now that's not designing for um, accessibility. That's designing for, for everyone. And uh, we believe at Microsoft that once you do that, you do inclusive product and service design, you, you, you actually innovate. And I'm going to show you the process on how it creates a, a, a innovation when you program with um, everyone in mind. In truth, also, we need to define disability. Now, disability is not a personal health condition. When you go to a doctor and you say, I'm not feeling too good, uh, too good he doesn't say, hey, yeah, I, I know, I think you have the disability. The only time that you have disability is if you have a mismatch human, human interaction. Now, I bought a BMI scale. Um, I've lost 16 kilos recently. As part of my midlife process, I've also got healthy. And I jumped on the BMI scale before I lost that weight, and I put in my details, four foot one, and I weighed 66 kilos at the time. And uh, I put in all the details and I clicked, uh, you know, uh, measure me. And it, it called me horrible names. And I, and I felt disabled at the time because it had mismatched human interaction. So that's, that's accessibility and what disability. Also, there's principles with accessibility. The first pr principle, and these are based on the WCAG, the Web uh, Center for Accessibility Guidelines, is perceivable. Can you see it? So if you have visual impairments like I do with my, my new fancy glasses that I have here, um, can you see it? Operable, can you use it? So motor, motor impairments. Understandable, can you understand it? And we've also seen the inclusion of ADHD and autism spectrum in also accessibility preparations. And finally, robust. If you're going to create accessible software, it can't break when you have future technologies, especially since most people who use accessibility software don't actually use it on portrait mode. They use it on landscape uh, mode. Now that we've uh, got our definitions, look at it. let's look at our motivators. First, stick and carrot. So stick is if you're going to uh, uh, tell a dog to do something, you can either use a stick and pound them or you can use a carrot or a, a piece of meat and you can tell them what to do. So the first is the stick, the legislation. So the 21st Century Digital Experience Act from the American federal government and then the EU Parliament Directory on Digital Accessibility that says that uh, by next year, if you don't have accessible software and you're publicly facing a civil site, meaning government or a civil society, then you can get up to like the, what the Canadians have done, $100,000 per day fine. Yes, stick. But I like to think about the carrot rather. And it's best summed up by the quality of life quote by Bill Gates, one of our farm founding chairmen. For most of human history, we put our innovative capacity in the, into improving the quantity of life. More, 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 more. Because we're living longer, our focus is starting to shift towards improving the quality of life. Making an altruistic approach to make things better. And once you have that, the quality of life, then you can also start to look at the awareness of others' difficulties and start, instead of pity, go to sympathy, empathy, and compassion. Remember what I said to you about that empathy bubble. 
And you create and you pop that bubble by looking at your customers and your people that use your software. So here is something called uh, empathy personas. And in, in these empathy uh, personas, we have Claudia, Ashley, and Ron. Ron is a 82-year-old, retired, multiple conditions, arthritis, losing his hearing, failing eyesight. You take these personas and you create persona labs. And you, you look at your software and you try to actually get out of that empathy bubble by applying them. You can go to the, that URL that you see there and download these, these software, um, these personas. So once you have your personas, then you look at the inclusive design steps. First of all, we recognize exclusion. You create your persona spectrums and then you superimpose them on your software. You solve for one extent to many with the persona spectrums and finally learn from diversity and adjust your software uh, platforms to cater for that. So we've got our persona spectrums. Over here, I've got an amputee who has one arm, um, who has lost an arm from, a, uh, from an accident. Then you have an arm injury, someone on a motorbike accident who's got a temporary disability and then a new parent. Because we know all new parents financially, mentally, physically are all kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, have accessibility issues. So you've got... You've got these persona spectrum. Now, if you go to your manager and you say, I want to cater for someone with an, uh, an amputee, and he's going to say, but there's only 26,000 of those in the, and this is the US Center for uh, uh, Disability Statistics. But if you look at the temporary um, uh, numbers, there's 13 million. And if you have the situational, there's 21 million. That means that if you cater for one persona spectrum, you're actually going to cater for 21 million individuals. Now, when we look at the broad people who are, uh, have accessibility requirements, there are over 3 billion people. There's 1 billion people with accessibility uh, requirements. And then there's an additional 2 billion people who are heavily invested, friends, family, loved ones, who really want to see their, their, that software um, be uh, used by, the, by, the, by their loved ones. That means that if you don't cater for accessibility software, you're really negating nearly a, a half of the world's population. Once you've got your persona spectrums, then you superimpose them over uh, your software journey. So in the software journey that we have here, you've got a ticketing scenario, registration, navigation, and checkout with, uh, well, not exactly in this COVID climate, but um, to buy an airline ticket. Now you've got the arm injury and everything changes. You've got, when you go in the beginning, you've got responsive design, a capture for registration, font and color options, accessibility help desk, single sign-on, callback help, voice search, SMS and email for ticketing, one button access, and then AI adjustment. Now I did a talk on sarcasm as a service. You can go look at it on my YouTube video and I showed how we're creating AI that has become more sensitive to individuals. Because if you start screaming at a, an AI saying, help, 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 and the AI doesn't respond in a sensitive manner. It can't actually be, um, a, you know, a part of your process. Once the AI also understands that, then adjust your flow. Let the AI go and adjust the flow and um, really change it for their person's personal accessibility requirements. Let's look at the next section, which is milestones. So normally you've got your milestones, which is accessibility right at the end. Remember the bolt on with me and my coffee and jumping on there and my, my 335R and the accessibility rider, you've got the shippable project and you send it through, but we've seen a, a new move to shift left and shift left really uh, says, uh, instead of a large investment at the end, do a small investment throughout the process, testing, coding, design, and backlog. And you, you now actually start to see that we're, we're, we're adopting Agile. We're adopting an Agile accessibility process. We've looked at how to uh, uh, burst that empathy bubble. And now we're doing it through an Agile process. We, we do that also and through that process with our tooling. The first tool I want to introduce to you is XCore. Now we've partnered with DQ Labs and a lot of our accessibility software uses the X engine. And we've open sourced uh, our software, which I'm going to demo to you also. And the X uh, engine is a JavaScript library. You can run it from any other language also. I'm going to show you how to run it in Python. Um, it's an NPM package. It scans a rendered DOM. So uh, whether you have a, a, a web application or a uh, a Windows app or even an Android app, it will scan your application, reports uh, back results at JSON, and the same engine as Accessibility Insights inside your, your code. And I know what you, you're thinking, wait, why can't I use this for DevOps? Yes, you can. I'm going to show you how to actually use this in a DevOps engine. So you've got your a developer and your DevOps uh, pipeline. You do your yarn test as part of your uh, release pipeline. Then it tests your, your page. It might be a TypeScript and HTML. And then it actually runs in Selenium or um, Cypress, et cetera. Um, and then 
prints back the results in your uh, HTML uh, uh, errors. And you can see here, he has it running in uh, X pipelines. You can go and play around with it, github.com forward slash Microsoft forward slash X dash pipeline samples. You get your results back there. You, you push them through to the, the testing team or your development team. But that's if you want to do testing um, at the beginning of the development. But what happens if you can't? If you can't actually test and you've got an existing site. Now, introducing the immersive reader. Now, this uses our cognitive services in the background to take your site and to convert it for you without you really having to do much effort into a accessible software that is WCAG 2.1 compliant. And what it does is it scans your page and uses cognitive services to create a rendered version of that page that is accessible. Now, you're using it already because you're using it in Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Office and Microsoft Excel. It already is there. So you just click on uh, Immersive Reader and it gives you the ability to, uh, to create uh, an immersive experience from your, your uh, unaccessible uh, software. So what can it do? It has multiple language and I checked it has Hindi, it has uh, Arabic, it has uh, English, it has all of these different languages and it can give you the ability to also to be multilingual. It has translation up to 60 languages and more every day, a pronunciation and it reads back that, so it can actually do reading back in a language uh, and also a voice of your choice, syllable breakdown and then finally also pictures. So you can get, and this is being used heavily in our learning environment for our schools also, because kids also want that, that uh, immersive experience. So enough talk, enough slides, let's do some demos here. So let's get out of here um, and I'm going to minimize that. If I do uh, make mistakes on my Macintosh, it, this is only the third month that I've got a Macintosh and I'm still learning. So the first demo I wanna show you is a page here with accessible and inaccessible. So uh, the accessible version here, and this is w3.org, the uh, accessibility uh, homepage. You can see here um, that this is the accessible version and it's got alt tags and it's got the right font and everything. But the inaccessible version looks exactly the same because all they've done there is that they've uh, done terrible HTML here. So if I go uh, look at the, uh, the list items here and I go inspect, you'll see there that the, with the inspect, they've used BR tags rather than list, uh, list tags, which is terrible, which means that a screen reader would never be able to uh, read that. And also on the alt tags, if I mouse over there, it doesn't tell me what I'm looking at. So a screen reader can't, suffer it, uh, can't see it. Now I'm gonna use uh, this little icon here and that's free to use the accessibility insights for web. And that uses the X engine. I can click on that. Now it's got all of these other options here, automated checks. You can go all the way through to, if you want to do uh, assessment, it gives you a very detailed assessment that you want to that you want to do. We don't want to do assessment right now. We want to do fast pass, because I'm going to show you in under uh, five seconds how to check with your accessibility. I'm going to click on fast pass. It's going to run through. It's going to tell me what's not accessible here. And then I'm going go to go back to my page and it's highlighted there. Now I've got all of my, my page there and I can click on that. It's gonna say, there's no alt for that text. You can inspect the HTML, you copy the failure data or file the issues and I can file it all the way through to GitHub and tells me how to actually fix it. I can also go and look at navigable um, and I can click on that, tab stops. And if I wanna tab through here, and this is the inaccessible page, you see that the tab stops just ends there. But if I go to the, the accessible page, then you can navigate there, you can click on uh, tab stops, and you can see how that page there is accessible, and I can go through that. So this is accessibility insight for Edge and Chrome. And now let's put this into DevOps, and let's put this into uh, uh, Python. Got plenty of time still with my demo. Um, and the first demo I want to show you is, uh, no, not that one. I want, uh, not the Floss demo. I want to show you how to run this with, uh, there we go. Yes, uh, in your DevOps tool chain. So I've got a page here that I created in uh, page.html. And if I, if I look at this page here, so let's go uh, validate, open. I want to open this with, uh, open an integrated terminal, open that. Uh, there we go. No, I don't want to do that. I want to just open this in Finder. Uh, okay, well, you can kind of see. So it's got a, it's an HTML page. This uh, text box has no accessible label and it's violating um, you know, a, a, a rule because you need a label. This one, the color contrast is too low and this text has an invalid role attribute. So role attributes are used to actually tell screen readers what to do. So this is an, a bad HTML site. And I've got this page there and I want to run this now in my 
my uh, Python uh, fixtures here. So you can see there I've got my start my Chrome driver, and then I've got my test X sample page here. This is all available in the links that I've sent you. Now I'm gonna run this against there, and it's gonna bring back in my DevOps toolchain the errors that that page actually had. So I'm gonna run it there, and uh, I'm gonna run all my scripts there, and I'll actually want to run it once, and then I'm gonna debug it, and I'm gonna show you what, what happened. So it ran, and it failed, but now I wanna check exactly why did it fail. And it stopped there, and I can go look at my data. You can see the violations there are exactly what I thought would happen. So uh, let's go back into data, uh, and we want to go violations. You can see there all insure elements um, have a, a, a valid uh, a role attribute, and it gives you all of that details and it, in JSON. And you can actually go there now and send that back to the developer. And this is available in the... Um, the accessibility at Selenium um, uh, tool chain that I sent you. And so, so that's in DevOps, but what about immersive reader, Rory? So we've looked at how to test it on the front end with your testing team, how to do it in DevOps. And the second one is, uh, the last one, sorry, is how to do this with the immersive reader. So now I've set up immersive reader beforehand um, and I've used the tutorial here. So start the immersive reader using the Python sample project. You can access that in Azure Cognitive Services. And I created my immersive reader beforehand, um, and, and it's, it's pretty soon, and it's free for the first million times you use it. Um, and uh, then $10 uh, uh, afterwards, though. So it's, it's pretty, pretty great. So I've got this immersive reader running there, and I've tied into it, and I've integrated it with uh, my project. Let me just close this. Uh, quick Visual Studio Insiders. Go my uh, project there. And not that project. There we go. And I've got my app.py, and my app.py then just gets gets my secrets to uh, speak to my um, my immersive reader cognitive services. Uh, pops my uh, my message, um, and then JSONifies the uh, results. And I've got my index.html there, and the index.html has uh, some text there. The immersive reader is a tool that implements proven techniques to improve reading comprehension. Um, and then it just calls a JavaScript uh, to get the token and then handle the immersive reader and then pops up the immersive reader. And this is everything you can get online via that uh, tutorial. Now, um, to run this, and this was a little bit difficult, not knowing Mac and everything like that, I had to run Flask run, had to install Flask, hopefully that will run. Oh, okay, of course it's not gonna run. Let's go to bash, bash, Flask run. Yay! And it's running on uh, port uh, 5000. Now I'm going to click through here, command click, and uh, let's move that into that. Just went into the wrong screen. Let's minimize that. And we want this, the immersive reader, Python quick start, yes. But we want you to come into this screen. There we go. Move to Dell. Oh, no, that is <laughs> that is already in this right screen. Move to built-in retina. There. Okay, so now it's got the text that we created about immersive reader. Remember, immersive reader is a tool that implements proven technologies. And this isn't uh, maybe not fully accessible. And it's got some languages there also. It's got Chinese and Arabic. Now to click on that, that's just the button that I that I selected and make it bigger. Now just click on that, and it goes in and it scans my page. It creates an immersive experience. Hopefully the Lord demos actually works out. It's can connect to my cognitive services and I've got an immersive reader. And um, I don't know if you can hear this though, but it's immersive actually Immersive reader is a, it's tool, a tool that implements, that implements proven, proven technology. So it actually is reading it out to me. And I can go in and change the, the font size, do, do, do the text preferences, the grammar options, the reading preferences. Also I can click on line fo uh, focus. Choose a language. So let's do this in uh, Hindi. Uh, there we go. By document. And it'll go and translate. Uh, hopefully that'll work. Um, there we go. And I can mouse over there and get the English uh, word version of that. And that's everything with Azure Cognitive Services. I just translated and made it, made it immersive into uh, Hindi. So that was the demo that I wanted to do, uh, show you. Uh, let's make it bigger. So in conclusion, we still have a, a bit more time. I haven't taken too much of your uh, time now. Uh, empathy, empathy bubble. 
and uh, being able to um, really, really create those persona spectrums. Um, and uh, uh, let me just create. Um, I know that there's questions. Get your questions ready uh, so far. Let me just find you. There we go. So get your questions ready so far. Um, and uh, uh, let me go back to PowerPoint. There we go. And pop that empathy bubble and create those persona spectrums. Then next, shift left. Start testing. You've got all these testing tools that I've showed you today. You've got the immersive reader. You've got uh, the um, and accessibility insights. You've got uh, the, the testing tools in Python using the X engine. And then automate. Create the ability to uh, to to measure and and automate your process. Thank you so much today. Um, I look forward to your questions. Please, if you can, send me some questions. I'll be on uh, Zulip also to take your questions. And let's 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 do exactly what we wanted to do. Let's create the world that we wanted to live in. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> you know, uh, so that was a very interesting talk and also some very amazing like tools. Hope you will use them for their websites. So now let me look for some questions. If you have any questions. Right now, no one has any questions from what I can Okay, see. well, uh, so a quick, a, a homework. Yeah, homework for you is to go to the and do the path and demo that I just did. So you can access that Python demo, and you can go to http aka.ms forward slash uh, for all and start playing around with the immersive reader. Start uh, playing around with the X engine. I'm not a Python developer. I did all of that and got it working in, in, in half an hour on my PC. I got immersive reader. I got uh, the X engine, and um, I was very impressed. It's got really great Python support. Now, if I wanted to create a Python script for a customer, I can create that immersive reader, click on it, and I would cater for those 3 billion people that, that, that had accessibility requirements. And um, I could do it even if I wasn't a, a Python developer. So you're following me on Rory Purdy, um, and uh, I'll leave the QR code here. Thank you so much for everything uh, today. We'll wait a little bit for more, some more questions, and then I'll take some more questions on Zulip. Zulip is very busy. Wow, there are a lot of people on there. I'm like, I, I feel like a, a kid in a candy store. I want to say hi to everyone there. There's a thousand people on there. Yeah, there, are, there are a lot of people. Thank you for that talk. Uh, I hope you see more accessible websites pretty soon. And let me check again. There's still no questions, so maybe. Can wait on Zulip. Yeah, no, no. Let's let's go to Zulip. Let's uh, um, it's, uh, we'll take the questions there. And I'll hang about. I'll be in the Microsoft booth also. If you want to come in to the Microsoft booth, we've got some wow, incredible speakers. If you you want to catch Chloe Condon and Cassie, and uh, if you if you missed uh, uh, Chris and everything like that, they are just incredible speakers. Really experienced advocates and and and, gr and great stuff to show you today. Yeah, I think Daniel's also having a session like right now there. So, uh, but after this, in five minutes, we'll be starting with a lightning talk. So, so head over to the Bangalore stage. Until then, you can go to networking and uh, visit the sponsor booths, including the Microsoft booths. And we'll be meeting you after the sponsor, uh, after the lightning talks, and after the queue. And 5:30 okay. p.m. Thank you.